Day, folks. Well, it's uh, time to do a bit of car work again. I've got more new parts coming in for blue. I've got two new belts today. The old drive belts are absolutely had it. <laughs> They've definitely seen better days. See the micro cracking through all the grooves. I think they're factory. Same with the um, power steering. They're all past it. Yeah, it's got the original Toyota branding on it. So they have to come off. I've got new ones, that'll be soon. I also got Betty's new front tyres back. I'm changing her over to proper highway terrain tyres, not all terrain. Uh, these ones, they're cheap. They came with the car and they're just really noisy. They're a $90 Chinese generic uh, tyre, ZTEX uh, Vigor AT. And uh, not ideal. Probably fine off-road because they're fairly chunky. They look good, but they don't ride so well, so I'm replacing them. Blue can have them for now, and uh, yeah, that's how it's going to go. So, yeah, I got one, three, four, I think it's about four or five years old. That one there I had, I scored that from somewhere, I can't remember where or why. That one there's brand new or maybe a year old. I just ordered it in the other day and got them to fit it up and balance it and everything. It's a lot easier that way, they have to be balanced anyway and unfortunately that's the only weights they use is on the outside of the rim. I prefer them stuck on in here, but as you can see there's probably that much oxide and dirt on there you wouldn't, you wouldn't get them to stay on. So they use clip-on, um, in this case it's a zinc weight. I've noticed a lot of the new ones are zinc, so they're physically bigger to make up for the lack of lead, which is a much denser uh, metal. That's something I need to buy, is actually a tub of uh, bead lube. Mind you, I think you can use Lux soap flakes and water. That's basically all I've used, but the actual lube's pretty good. And that's the old spare that came off that rim, so I'll keep that for the time being. It's still in good nick. <laughs> Little beadies. That's just dirt that's been rolling around inside there and clumping together. Snowball effect. Uh, yeah, so... I've got to whip Betty's front wheels off and throw those two on, get her back out the front out of the way, and then I'll uh, start doing some preliminary disassembly on blue, I think, although I don't think the weather's going to hold out, so I might just throw the front wheels back on and go from there next week-ish, next weekend. But for now, I want to aim for at least... Well, I've got annual leave now, but I don't think the weather's going to let me commit to a full day's work on him so we'll see how we go. I'll keep an eye on the forecast. It might be a uh, I think Sunday or Monday would be good because I go back to work on Wednesday so I think Sunday or Monday is forecasted to be a completely clear day and hopefully by then the timing belt kit and water pump will be in. So that's most loose ends taken care of. Belt kit, water pump, um, belts, basically everything under that timing cover is taken care of so that's good. That's really good. Radiator hoses and stuff I can do later. The radiator's been recoated about a year ago, so that's all good. But it's just um, everything that I have to do while that timing cover is off is going to be done. That's my main thing. I don't want to have to take that front of the motor off again. So, yeah, I'll cover all bases while it's apart rather than doing what a lot of people do and just get one thing done and then another and another. and the labour and the time adds up too quickly so that's not a good thing. Anyway, let's move on. Well, the front brakes are bedded in nicely. I'm uh, just getting a high-pitched squeal under very light braking and it's um, it's like a high-frequency resonation in the pad or something. It needs uh, anti-squeal paste around the uh, guides. That's one thing I didn't do when I popped them back in again. I completely forgot about that. Not that I have any. Um, I'm going to have to quickly pop the calipers off and the pads out and actually uh, clean everything up and put some anti-squeal uh, paste on them. It's not hard to do. It's only two bolts and the caliper comes off. I won't have to bleed the system or anything again. So, nah, all good on that one. Really good. She drives well, handles pretty well. Um, I did hit a bit of a pothole the other day and now she pulls ever so slightly to the right. So she definitely needs another alignment, but... That's normal. I'm guessing these are fairly easy to upset. 
So yeah, I'll get that checked out next. Okay, well Blue's rear end set up a little bit different to Betty's. Hers is a uh, drum brake rear, which is more traditional. This has the uh, disc brakes. And uh, there's a floating rivet. There's a rivet working its way out. Um, yeah, park brake appears to be uh, acting on the inner pad. The inner pad has a big protrusion and there's a um, mechanism in there. I'm not going to get anywhere under it because it's only supported by the jack, but yeah, interesting. You can hear clunking up the front because it's going back through the drive line. Yeah. Discs have definitely had a fair bit of material machined off them. A lot of material. You can see the the grooves there. They've taken quite a considerable amount off and they're very thin so they'll have to be replaced. Pads are still good but I'll get new pads anyway. Yeah, definitely need rear discs but I don't think I can fit thick ones in. My neighbour has a pair of SV21 Camry discs but they're probably the right diameter, I don't know about thickness because they're actually vented discs, they're that thick. I don't think these calipers will be big enough. The front calipers are much bigger and they take a 300mm disc, but the 250mm SV21 Camry discs, I don't think they'll fit. These calipers don't look like they have enough uh, travel, enough clearance. So yeah, I'm guessing these are exclusively uh, rear RAV4 discs, nothing else. Anyway, I'll get on to uh, taking Betty's uh, rear tyres off and uh, go from there. I'm only doing it one corner at a time this time. So, yeah, they're neatly set up, pretty tidy. It's good, easy to work on setup. I'm going to do rear shocks and springs because these shocks are completely gone. The arse end just bounces like a bloody Cadillac on air springs. <laughs> Comfy to drive, but it won't pass roadworthy, and that's the main thing. I mean, I'd have no problems driving it with soft springs and shocks like that, but Roadworthy will not allow it. The muffler and everything's fairly new, the rest of the exhaust isn't. <laughs> that muffler's got a ton of water in it too, so I've got to do something. Yeah, I've got to dry that out before it rusts out. Hopefully it'll be on the road soon so I can uh, give them a good thrashing and get some heat through the exhaust system and dry that muffler out, because that's what kills them. Condensation. It's not water from anything else, that's why you get water out the tailpipe. Some people ask me, why is my car leaking water out the tailpipe? Is my head gasket gone? I was like, no, if it's on cold start or has been done, done a lot of short runs, you'll always see water coming out. It's when it's green or you notice your coolant's going down that you've got to worry about it. <laughs> no, there's plenty of other different ways. Yeah, these wheels are thoroughly corroded. This one hadn't been off in ages. I had to actually bash the inside surface with a uh, dead blow hammer to break it free. I had to whack it a fair few times, use a nylon hammer and just belt the inner surface of the rim. I hit it there and uh, it gradually came off but wouldn't be fun on the side of the road if you've got a flat and uh, nothing to whack it with. Actually in that case the best thing is to actually loosen the nuts a full turn and just care very slowly creep along 10-15 metres or so and just hope that it actually breaks itself free. Um, that sort of distance won't hurt the tyre but it will um, break that oxide layer that's locking the wheel onto the onto the uh, disc or the uh, drum. Either way they both get stuck. So yeah, loosen wheel nuts one turn, get back in and just creep along a little bit. Just work it loose itself, let it work itself loose, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, big thanks to Alex993CC1 for sending in this twin hammer industrial uh, rattle gun. That thing has heaps more balls than my generic one. Heaps more. This one here I've had off recently so it's fairly well clean. But again it was partly stuck on this centre boss because it's a combination of hub centric and lug centric. Like it's a neat fit on this centre boss but you also use the studs or the nuts to centralise the wheel, that taper bit there. No, sorry, the, these are hub-centric. This taper doesn't do anything unless you've got the steel wheels. You can use these on both the steelies and the alloys. But no, I'm wrong. This doesn't do anything. It's only this. 
So these are technically hub-centric wheels, kind of like what BMW do. Um, they use bolts, tapered bolts, but still the uh, centre of the hub actually centralises the wheel, whereas a lot of wheels you have a bit of a clearance between the centre boss and this step here, and the lugs alone centralise the wheel because they're tapered. Um, <coughs> and that's sort of the difference between hub-centric and lug-centric. So, yeah, this is just a standard drum rear end. I can almost pull this drum off as it is. Yeah, there we go. Came off without any, any persuasion, any mechanical persuasion. Look fairly good. The linings are okay. That's full lining there. The dust is not asbestos, but you still don't want to breathe too much of it. It's still a fine particulate. There's the handbrake cable there, which pulls on the shoes and forces the shoes out to the drum. Obviously it's not on because I'm jacking up the back end anyway. I've just got it, got it sitting in first gear, so it can't roll. But yeah, and these are a, I think these are a sealed hub bearing pack, so you just unbolt the whole lot and throw it away. You can get these hub assemblies off eBay for like $60, $70 each. So it's really cheap and easy. You're not pressing bearings or messing around with stuff. It's just strip all this off, strip the back plate off, throw the old one out, bolt the back plate on the new one and fit it onto the, onto the uh, drive shaft. Job done. The shocks are uh, Pedder's Comfort Gas. They've been replaced at one point. They are not factory. Those are factory and they are completely shot. So I'll probably put in the equivalent of those or those in blue. Likewise, coil springs. I need coil springs.